welcome. I'm Ashwani Mishra, Editor Technology at ET Insights, and I have been joined today by Brijesh Rathor, VP South Asia, Professional and Global Strategic Accounts, APAC at Diversity. Welcome, Brijesh, to this conversation. Thanks, Ashwani, for the invitation. Right, uh, Brijesh, uh, sustainability is, has become one of the key topics for businesses across and uh, a lot of uh, businesses are focusing on, on the sustainability piece and they have been doing a lot of stuff around it. Uh, how do you view sustainability within your overall business? Uh, and also if you could share your sustainability journey for us. Yeah, so you are uh, absolutely right. And I'll, I'll, I'll take you back why exactly sustainability is the need of the hour. So in our today's world where you have uh, uh, man-made crisis, uh, events like COVID, the climate crisis, uh, which is of course, uh, again, a man-made crisis and uh, increasingly geopolitical situation. So the various uh, alliances which are happening because of which the wars, et cetera, are happening. The first casualty is the resource uh, crisis. So right. the resources are getting increasingly scarce in today's world. So these resources could be in terms of your uh, raw materials or could be in terms of the people. So people movement is not happening, which is impacting the businesses. Now, if we look at this particular situation, it is much more important for the businesses like ours, which are the leading global provider of cleaning and hygiene solutions that we work with those kind of technologies and those kind of uh, uh, marketplaces and the vendors so that we are able to provide sustainable solutions to our customers. So it is much closer to the home. Uh, the carbon footprint uh, is much, much lesser. And uh, before we provide the solutions to the customers, the raw materials and the finished goods travel as little as possible right. uh, uh, to, to the end customer. So this is as far as where exactly we as an organization come from. Uh, our sustainability journey is extremely interesting. So you would know that we are, uh, we would be a hundred year old organization in this August. Uh, go back to as early as 1935 we started planting carnivore trees because that would give a very essential element for the manufacturing of our own, uh, raw materials. Right. We, had the, we had the idea about sustainability uh, right from 1935. Uh, but not, not, that you can say was the need of the R that was going into uh, the manufacturing of our raw materials. But in 1975, we banned CFC, chlorofluorocarbons, which right. includes the ozone layer. And it was not banned globally then. It was banned 13 years later in the Montreal Convention. Right. World. So we banned CFC in our products good 13 years before. So that would give you an idea about how conscious we have been about the environment. Uh, fast forward 1993. We banned APEOs from our products. So APEOs is a technical term which stands for alkyl phenyl ethoxylates. Uh, and if these elements of products goes into the river, they disturb the endocrine system of the aquatic species. Right. We took, a call, we took a call that we should not be having any APOs in our products, in our raw materials, in our formulations, because ultimately all the raw material, whichever goes ultimately lands up into the sea and it damages the endocrine system of the aquatic animals. So we banned APOs in 1995, 1993, which is good 10 years before European Union banned it. Right. Okay, so, so you can say we have been leading the world when it comes to uh, the right practices um, from a moral perspective, as well as from a sustainability perspective. Uh, come fast, fast forward, 2018, we started our facilitator for life uh, as a strategy, uh, which is uh, from 2018 until 2025. And uh, the whole objective of this facilitator for life uh, approach is that we become a medium to facilitate life on our planet. Right. And, uh, and if you have to ask me one number, uh, which, would, which would tell us that how exactly we are working on various projects under facilitator for life, the end product is the carbon, uh, carbon dioxide emission reduction, which is, uh, which, which is targeted at 10% reduction, which is massive for an industry mm -hmm. like an industry, which is a massive guzzler for energy and water. Uh, for the production of the raw material, which goes to the various end customers like hotels or breweries or dairies or uh, hospitals, etc. So our journey has been pretty interesting. Uh, we are conscious that today's generation, the millennials, the customers, the stakeholders, 
who have invested in those businesses are looking at all those organizations uh, which are not only practicing sustainability at their own manufacturing places but are providing solutions uh, which help them become sustainable so our journey has been very interesting so far uh, we have uh, we have come out with solutions uh, which ensures that uh, all our future technology would be having sustainability as a central point. Right. Right. Points well taken, you know, uh, uh, Bridges. So yes, you've you've been ahead of the curve, ahead of the whole momentum of sustainability. I want to say that, uh, uh, and 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 the and the, and the uh, impact shows, you know. So that that's very clear and evident. A uh, couple of things you, you you touched upon the facilitator to life uh, kind of project. So is while you spoke about the carbon reduction of ten percent, any other measures that you have in place, any any other impact that you would like to highlight here? Okay, so uh, let me let me talk about our sustainability charter. So we have twelve key performance uh, indicators in the sustainability charter. Right. Uh, if we touch upon the, the the last four KPIs from nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, which would talk about how do we uh, how do we incorporate uh, right from the design stage uh, the various elements of sustainability um, before the product gets launched. Uh, right, so if, if I if I talk about the key elements, uh, uh, let me talk about the Charter Nine, which talks about every solution which we come out with the market in the in the market would be showing a dollar savings to the customers. Right, and and you would agree with me, uh, no customer in today's world would accept a solution which is costing more to them for the sake of the environment. Absolutely. So if, if if you are talking about reducing a carbon footprint, it is essential that you show value to the customer that by adopting this particular solution, you will be, you will be saving money uh, in your overall operations. And you would also, by the way, uh, reduce your carbon footprint, uh, which is which is also important for all our customers. So, so we reduce uh, the uh, money which the customers are spending on their operations through our solutions. Uh, uh, we also incorporate the sustainability scorecard while designing our solutions. Uh, so, which means that the energy, water, uh, carbon footprints, uh, the, the saving of the assets, all those elements are incorporated there. Uh, then we also ensure that there is a reduction in the overall packaging. Right. So, right. so, the, so the packaging, pack, packaging uh, waste is reduced to our solutions. And all those things are all measured uh, in our system, within our systems, and we ensure that it is all uh, objective uh, assessment at the end of the year. Absolutely. So you touched upon these dollar savings. You touched upon, you know, having a sustainably uh, sustainability scorecard where you measure these parameters, and also about reduction in packaging. Are you also looking to design green uh, products? You know that that you offer in the market because again, a lot of companies uh, in other sectors as well have put the design thinking element of you know creating green products right at its inception. How are you, uh, you know focusing on this area? A very interesting question. So Ashwini, uh, uh, as I, I briefly touched upon it, how we at the design stage itself, we ensure that uh, sustainability is at the core of our uh, product design. Um, so I have covered that particular part. Let me cover the end result of it. So uh, you, any customer would ask for the validation that your products is actually uh, sustainable, is green, right. is, is, is uh, certified by some independent agencies. I would say my product is the best, is meeting all the standards. So all uh, we have a range of almost 500 products which are which are certified uh, by the leading design uh, eco label agencies uh, globally. So whether it is whether it is uh, Green Seal, whether it is Cradle to Cradle, whether it is Eco Cert, whether it is Nordic Swan, all those leading organizations have certified our products that these meet the strictest and the most uh, uh, modern uh, parameters and elements of uh, sustainability. Mm -hmm. And but unfortunate part is not all products can be eco certified in chemical industry. Right. So right. There, are certain, there are certain products, uh, especially in the range of uh, disinfection and sanitization, uh, which are not eco certified. Um, but they, uh, by the way, comply to all the all the all the parameters of uh, compliances, etc. 
Um, then there are new technologies. So we, as as we are the global leaders, we keep on innovating. We keep keep on coming out with the newer technologies. So the certification bodies are still not equipped to assess those technologies. So those kind of challenges are there. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we are not only trying to educate those uh, certification bodies. Uh, most importantly, we are always trying to be ahead of the curve when it comes to making our customers' uh, operations sustainable and uh, efficient. Absolutely right. You know, just a follow-up question here, uh, Brijesh. You know, so while you you have you have been uh, you know driving the whole sustainability agenda from a, for, for a long time. Uh, so you know, I, I thought of asking to you this: is has there been an uh, increasing sales growth? You know, because many when I talk to uh, some leaders here, there is always this dilemma of uh, you know how can businesses be sustainable and at the same time be profitable? So you know, put in money and then you have to wait for some time to uh, you know see those uh, translate. How are you looking at things and what has been your uh, scenario? So you would be. You would be encouraged to hear this, that uh, if we talk about the India scenario per se, and this is applicable globally too, customers are fast adopting all the solutions which are making their operations sustainable. Right. Okay. And I would talk about the sales numbers of our key products, which are uh, making the customer solutions uh, sustainable. However, the critical part is not only the product, it is about how you carry forward the solution at the premises of the customers and demonstrate it to the customer that how it can make your operation sustainable. So our right. sales plays an extremely important role in carrying forward all those solutions to the customers and uh, demonstrating it to the customer over a period of time that how exactly it makes their operation sustainable. So to give you an example, uh, many systems and the platforms we launched over a period of last few years um, are showing uh, very, very strong growth uh, trajectory at this point of time. Uh, for example, the microfiber, uh, the, the cloth, earlier, uh, five years or 10 years back, uh, you would realize the customers would be using any kind of a duster. Now, today, they understand what is microfiber, uh, how it makes their uh, operation efficient, how it lasts much longer than any other normal duster. And we are seeing almost a 70% kind of a growth in the microfiber. Uh, yeah, that's huge. Yeah, it is huge uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a bigger base. Uh, other other thing which we are doing is to uh, traditionally the products are transported in a five liter cans or a twenty liter cans, uh, right. which essentially means that the products are less concentrated and it has more of water. So as we carry more of water across the length and breadth of the country, you are actually committing uh, crime to the environment by emitting carbons. Uh, so what we are doing uh, a lot is to shift many of those five liter packs to the super concentrates which are in a small pack of one and a half liters or two and a half liters packaging. So it means less of plastic, less of water transportation. So there is less of carbon emissions happening while you are transporting. Carbon carbon. Right. And, right. So if we define all these categories of super concentrates, there are various platforms. Uh, we are seeing a higher double digit growth right from 20% to 35% in this category, which is the backbone of our operations. So right. 20 30 percent growth in the backbone of our operations okay. is a tremendous growth. Uh, then we have a few interesting technologies like Flush Me Not. And uh, Flush Me Not is where we tell the urinal operators or the hotels or the institutes to stop the water supply. So if you go to the Bombay airport, you would find the Bombay airport does not have yes. supply. And uh, we use a very advanced technology which ensures that you don't get a bad smell. In fact, if you have an infrastructure bottleneck in your urinals, by using this particular technology, those infrastructure bottlenecks can be navigated around and you would still not feel any bad smell there in the bathrooms. So that particular platform, which we are taking you to all the uh, institutes where there are urinals, that is growing at a whopping roughly 170% growth. Uh, which, means, which means customers in India appreciate any solution which can reduce the water consumption. So if you are reducing the water consumption to the urinal, you don't have to recycle that water. Number one. Right. Number two, during, during the summertime, many of the uh, operations are run through the tanker water, which itself is very costly. Right. And uh, UN has declared India as a water deficit country. So I, I, I take pride 
uh, that Delusi works in a direction which is supporting India uh, in terms of the water consumption, reduction in the water consumption, and we are educating our markets in that particular direction. Absolutely. Very interesting, you know. So it's very, very enlightening to see when you have uh, these numbers, you know, because that really shows the value and, and the purpose behind the initiatives that, uh, you know, the company is rolling out. So really good to know these uh, figures and, and the initiative. Uh, yeah, if the, if the numbers are not coming in there, it means the market is not accepting those solutions, which itself is a problem there. Absolutely, absolutely. One final question that I had, Rajesh, was again, you know, I, I was going through uh, the public domain and there was this Profit with the Purpose Award that you got at the World Sustainability uh, Awards 2022. Now, So For Hope program, I believe that's that's what uh, it was called. Could you elaborate on this project and the impact that you were able to promote a circular economy? Yeah, I think, I think you touched upon a uh, very relevant point. So, uh, so for Hope is our flagship program, uh, which we run globally in 47 countries. So what is it? Uh, take a look. Uh, our average 400 room hotel produces three and a half tons of soap waste every year. Right. So room hotel, three and a half tons of soap waste. Uh, there are 7 million kids who die every year in our country because they don't have access to soap. They are not able to wash their hands, hand washing is not there, and they go through the various disease cycles like diarrhea, pneumonia, etc. So what we do as diversity, remember facilities for life, what we do in, at diversity is to connect those hotel operators because we have extremely good relationship with them. Right. Take that soap from them, repurpose that soap through our technology, so we have collaboration with the various NGOs. So we take their soap, crush their soap, sanitize their soap, repurpose it, and it is fit for use again. Yeah. And distribute the soap soap to the underprivileged community. So uh, so far we have, and we operate this program globally for seven countries. So far we have processed roughly uh, six thousand uh, tons of soaps, and it has six six thousand. So uh, we have processed roughly 23.4 million uh, tons of soaps so okay. far, so and okay. which which means which means if each soap is growing theoretically to one family and each family has four members, so roughly okay. we are touching the size of 100 million people. Absolutely, uh, this particular program. The other advantage is that all that soap otherwise would have gone to the landfills. Right. 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 So. So instead of sending that soap to the landfills, we are reprocessing it, sending, sending it to the people who actually need it. So our, our contribution is in this particular area is collecting the soap, ensuring that the hotels get the soap because they diversity has a credibility, ensuring that it reaches the right people, the NGOs. We provide the technology, we provide the equipment, and we do the last, last mile connected with connectivity with the NGOs and the soap reaches the right people. And uh, it gives great satisfaction to diversity that uh, we are able to provide uh, as simple as a soap and people can wash their hands and get rid of many of the diseases uh, which otherwise happen if you don't wash your hands. Absolutely. Very, very enthralling era. So, you know, so in a way you're promoting the circular economy as well. And, and in terms of addressing the concerns that you know, touching so millions of lives, I guess that's very impactful, uh, Brijesh. I'm through with the questions, Rajesh. Any points that I think you know I would have missed out or you want to highlight, please feel free to do so. No, I think uh, the only thing I would like to talk about is uh, how sustainability is embedded into our uh, um, work. Uh, so our, our work is essentially on the basis of our, our ESG, is on the basis of uh, protecting the environment and the natural resources. Uh, it is about caring for our people and uh, our communities uh, and the customers. So, and as well as um, uh, sustainable good governance. So uh, on these three platforms, our ESG approach is, uh, which ensures that, uh, and, and all the three are very closely linked. So we, as we protect the environment and the natural resources, uh, we are able to take care of our people, the customers, as well as the communities around. And I gave you the example, so for who? Uh, and uh, good governance is all about being transparent, having a good engagement, and uh, ensuring that we always come out with the technologies which are uh, sustainable for the future. 
Uh, so I think I think our ESG program we are super proud of, uh, and uh, we all at Diversity feel that uh, uh, we are contributing for building our nation uh, in this particular direction and creating a culture of cleaning and hygiene uh, as far as uh, all our B2B customers are concerned. Absolutely, Bridget. So that pride is well deserved, you know. So uh, no two doubts about it. One thing that I wanted to ask, and and I, I should have asked this before. What what is the role of tech here? You know, when 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 you there's a lot of data that is that would be there, you know, for you to you know process and then take actions on it. What kind of tech is in place? Uh, uh, you know that that helps you enable all these things. So uh, when you say tech, you the technology which drives our uh, products. Uh, you know, not not the products, but but the, you know uh, the the sustainability programs that we have. For example, profit with purpose. Again, you know. So I guess there would be a lot of data that you would be collecting from the. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, as I said, that there is a. Uh, I I use the word that we have a sustainability uh, scorecard. Right. Right, and the sustainability scorecard is uh, is is a series of things which we capture from our customers right at the time of uh, introducing the technology or a product to the customers. Uh, so we have a network of our people um, across across the country, and we install those kind of technologies which collect the data uh, even remotely. So we have various kind of platforms like IntelliDash, IntelliLinen, uh, um, uh, which are installed on the various dishwash machines or the laundry machines. Right. And send the data to the cloud, and we collect that particular information. So much of the information is collected through these kind of platforms, which are automated platforms. And you can so somebody sitting in Amsterdam can actually look at the data uh, about the consumption of water, energy, and uh, chemical happening in a hotel, which is in in, in Bombay. Uh, so we use technology in that way to collect the data, and then certain kind of data has to be collected manually. For example. Uh, the amount of soap which is processed, the amount of uh, soap which is collected, how many how many communities it is being served, um, so all that data is uh, collected manually through a network of uh, people and our uh, processes. Right, 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 Rajesh. Thank you so much for this conversation. I stand truly inspired here, and my best wishes to you. Thanks, Ashwini. Thanks for your time.